Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome back to my series on starting a booktube channel. In this series I'm taking you through every single stage of booktubing, from thinking about what ideas you're going to do, planning videos, speaking in front of a camera, to uploading your videos and ultimately getting engaged with the booktube community. If you'd like to see more videos in this series, I will link the playlist in the description box below. Today's video is going to be talking about editing. Now I am certainly not a technology genius, so in terms of the finer points of editing and using software, I'm probably not going to be able to help with that, but what I can do is give you an overview of how I edit my videos and some different types of software that is available for you. The first thing I would say is that if you are starting a YouTube channel, do not buy any Movie Maker software. There really is no need. The software that I use to edit my videos is Adobe Premiere, which I think costs me about 17 to 18 pounds a month or something. And for the amount that I use it and how easy it is for me to use that software, I feel like that's worth it for me, but I didn't invest in any, any software until about two years, two and a half years into my booktube journey, if you like. But please do not feel like you need that kind of software when you're just starting out. If you use a Windows PC, then normally your PC will come with Windows Movie Maker, which is free technology, and if you use a Mac, it should come with iMovie. Both of these programs are completely fine and serviceable, especially when you're first starting starting out. I use Windows so I can't really speak to Macs, but I used Windows Movie Maker for a couple of years and I found it completely fine. It was really user friendly. The reason that I upgraded is that it wasn't very good at putting text on screen. I found that very difficult and there was no option to put in any overlays either, as in like pictures. If I wanted pictures of book covers to come up here, I had to download another piece of dodgy free software which did that. So I didn't really like doing that and it meant that I had to edit my videos twice. So for me, like the more I got into it, I started to find that Movie Maker wasn't fulfilling all of my needs. But if you're just sitting down in front of a camera and you're talking and you don't need to do all of this kind of jazzy editing stuff, then it's completely fine. I don't use my software to do anything that amazing. I don't have any fancy transitions when I'm doing vlogs or anything like that. The main thing I use my editing software for is to edit myself, edit my speech, to put pictures and text on screen. And then the other thing I do is use color grading. So what this is, is really like an Instagram filter. To give you an idea of the difference, this is what my frame would look like naturally if I didn't use color grading. So this is what my lens naturally picks up from the light that's in my bedroom. Color grading is very useful if it's particularly dark or your lens has picked up some odd colors, like say it's slightly too warm or slightly too cool. Um, I personally use this preset filter because this is the aesthetic that I want for my YouTube videos. I would suggest if you want to do color grading, have a play around and see what you, what you want your videos to look like it doesn't really matter. It's something that came with my software, so now I use it. But this certainly isn't a prerequisite and this is not something that you need to understand before you start uploading your YouTube videos. I only use a preset filter that comes with my software and I just had to play around and thought, oh yeah, that one looks nice, that's the one I'm going to use, but it really doesn't matter. So now I'm going to give you a sneak peek into how I edit my YouTube videos and you can see how I go about doing it. It's very, very simple and most of this software is quite intuitive so once you start playing around with it you can probably find out how to do it. Adobe Premiere itself when you buy the software comes with videos which explain exactly how to use it and I found that really helpful so I'm not going to go into all of that detail now because if you want to use this particular program there are other videos that will tell you how to do that, but I do think it's always nice to see behind the scenes of other people's videos and how they edit, and I used to watch a lot of those kind of videos before I started, so if it helps you, <laughs> let's go and see how I edit mine. Okay, so this is what I see when I'm editing a video. This is my Adobe dashboard, I guess. Um, the first thing I do when I'm editing a video is drop down the files that I've got from my memory card into this area here. This is from my most recent book haul. Um, and this area is quite useful because you've got the visual bit up here, which doesn't really matter for this because it's video, so we're not looking at different pictures. And down here, you've got the audio. So this makes it really easy for editing because I can see where I was talking and where I wasn't. When I'm filming a video, I trip over my words a lot and I repeat the same things a lot. So this makes it really handy for editing. The first thing I do is highlight one of the um, files and then go to the color section up here and do my color grading because it's just easier to do it when the file is in one big section rather than being cut. So all I do is go to this section which gives you a look 
and you've got all of these different filters here so you can sort of scroll through and do, make different looks for your video you can see it's changing here and literally cho choose whatever it is you, you want there's lots and lots of different options so although you can use um these tools here to change the like the vibrance look and the c contrast you can do it all manually i find it's really easy just to use a preset option so then i go back to the editing panel and make a rough cut so what that means is i basically use this little cursor to scrub through all of the footage and see which sections i want to keep and which i need to cut out so this isn't very refined i'm not doing anything perfectly at this point i'm literally just seeing what i want to keep so for example, this section, I know that I started speaking several times and then screwed up and had to go back to the beginning. So if I can go through here and find which is the last time I started this sentence. So I'm starting it again there. So it looks like this section at the end is the only section where I actually said something useful. So I'll just use a little razor tool. I normally use shortcuts on my keyboard, but you won't be able to see that. Um, so I use a razor tool to cut what I need and then just right click to get rid of anything that I don't want. So I end up having these little sections of video, which are blank and sections of videos, which I'm going to keep. Okay, so now I've done that for my whole video and I have these little sections all lined up here. So I have cut most of the pauses and most of the gaps out, but if I just played across these cuts here. You can see that this doesn't really flow together very well yet. There's still quite a lot of nonsense in between my edits. So what I can do is double click on one of these sections and then it comes up into this corner here and this is where I can do the really, um, well I just find it easier to do the more minute editing. Using these controls down the bottom you can edit when this section begins and when it ends. So I think that the end was quite messy of this one. So if I scroll to the end here and just play it through. Yeah, I just let my sentence run on. So let's find when that sentence naturally kind of ends. <laughs> Yeah, so I want this to finish after my boyfriend's mum. That's where I want this sentence to end. So now I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to really find the exact best moments to cut this clip. And what's really good about Adobe is as I am using these keys, um, I can still hear the video. So if I turn it up, so that you guys can hear it as well. You can hear everything that I'm doing on this video, everything that my microphone's picked up. So every breath, every tut, um, and it makes it really easy to edit. So if I get to just scroll back now. <laughs> so where did this word end? And then I can use these um, mark out buttons to end that section. So you can see as I've edited that up there, it's turned into a hole down here where I've stopped editing. So I can check if that's worked by kind of watching it back here. Oh, so I've got the end of the word mum and then I've kind of taken a breath to go on to the next sentence. So this is what's really good about this software is that I can be really finicky <laughs> about where I end each of my um, each of my edits. So if I edit that there instead, take out that breath, that's fine. Um, and now I can roll on into the next sentence and that should be okay. So if I then look at this uh, clip. And while we were there, we went to a... Okay, so I start quite well. I think there's just a little bit of gap in air that I need to get rid of. So if I just scroll through, you can hear you can hear my voice like when I start speaking. So normally what I would do is from where I start speaking, I give myself like a couple of frames of silence just before I start speaking, just to make sure that it doesn't kind of jump in too soon. So now that I've edited both of those things, I can get rid of this gap in between them and hopefully if I play that back now that should roll across quite well. I have I bought when I was in Lincolnshire visiting my boyfriend's mum and while we were there we went to a second house. So that's nearly there. I might edit that a little bit more because I want that to roll on quicker into and we went into the second hand bookshop because that's part of one sentence so I might get rid of a couple of frames there but essentially this is what I do all the way through my uh, video 
um, just to make sure that it runs on really quickly. I'm just zooming in here so that I can delete that tiny kind of frame there. Um, and that's what I do for every single one of these cut portions of film, um, just so that it runs on really easily. So after editing all of my speech and making sure I'm happy with it, there's only one more thing that I would do, and that is at the end of the video, I normally pose for a thumbnail. There we go. Um, so what I do is just kind of scroll through here and choose which lovely picture of myself I want to use as my thumbnail, and then I can just take a screenshot there um, and save that, um, and then just completely get rid of this section of video. And then the last thing I need to do is then add in my um, end page, which I have at the end of all of my videos, which just helps me to promote other videos that other people might want to watch, and it has all of my social media on there, um, and it's quite handy at the end of your videos to have something like this, because a lot of people watch videos in playlists or they kind of roll on to another video very quickly. So if you want people to know about where to find you, or if you want to have um, a card here which um, displays another video that they can click on, then it's good to have kind of 10 seconds or so at the end of your video just to give a break so people know that your video's ended before they go straight onto another one. Um, so this I've already made, so this is really easy that it goes straight onto this. Mm. My little rave music at the end of my videos. So that's essentially a really standard um, video editing experience for me. I don't normally put very many pictures or um, words up. It is very, very easy to insert pictures if you want to. You've got this media browser section here which goes into all of your files and makes it really easy. It's like if I wanted to put a cover of a book, I've got a folder where I, I save all of those. So if I wanted um, you know, the cover of Agnes Grey or Anna Karenina in my video, um, it's really easy just to kind of drag it and then it sits on top here and I can manipulate where I want that, like if I want that over here, which is where I normally do, I can do um, effects so that it fades in and fades out and I can like decide down here how long I want that, where I want it, how long I want it to last for. Um, all of this stuff is really intuitive, so if you did want to learn how to do all that stuff on this, um, software particularly, that would be really easy. I can also put in titles, which um, allows you to write stuff. So if I did want to add a title, I just kind of drag here and I can change the font and I can type in. So like this is, it, this is brilliant, it's so easy. Um, to use all of this stuff. My aim for this video isn't to go into any great deal of detail because there are other people who could explain this so much better than I could. But hopefully this has given you a really nice overview, a bit of a behind the scenes look of what I do. Um, and hopefully <laughs> hasn't scared you or made it look very, very difficult because it's really not. It does take ages the first time you edit your first video. But once you get into it, you get quicker at doing the actual editing. And really, you also get better at filming yourself in a way that makes it easy to, to edit. So I realize things that I do with my voice and things that I want to cut out. Um, and the whole process gets really quick. I think each video takes me about half an hour to edit now, really. I hope that was helpful. If you had any other specific editing questions that you have for me, please do leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm going to be doing other videos in the coming weeks on how to upload your video and use the YouTube interface, and then another video on how to engage with the BookTube community. And then, hopefully, I will have answered all the questions um, that there possibly could be about BookTubing. I mean, probably not, but if there's anything else that you would particularly like to know, do get in touch with me and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.